Hello and welcome to this next exercise. This one is uh, a little bare bones. I didn't put a lot of thought. This is what happens when I don't copy a video from earlier modules. I have to make one from scratch while I make it a little bit lazy. Uh, so here we've just got some values. Don't have to worry about the context. Let's just run a test. We've got a two-tailed test. The hypothesis is given to us. We'll run the test and then we'll uh, develop a 95% confidence interval. So. Uh, the first step that we're going to do, we've already got our hypothesis test here. We need our test statistic. So this is just n minus 1 s squared over the hypothesized value. And we have 25 observations, so 25 minus 1. That sample standard deviation was 1.9 squared. And the hypothesized value, now this is just, again, one of those little things that can often catch students off guard. The hypothesis is already stated in terms of the variance, so we don't need to square it again. This is just 7.9. We don't have to square that. That's already been squared. That's our hypothesized variance. Had this been given to us as a standard deviation, then we would have to square it, but that's not the case here. So let's just plug these numbers into our calculator. 25 minus 1 is 24 times 1.9 squared equals divided by 7.9. And I have 10 point, let's round it to 10.97. 10.97. Now let's go to our tables and we'll get our p-value uh, p value for this test. So 1097, we have 24 degrees of freedom, right? Degrees of freedom is 25 minus 1, so we have 24 degrees of freedom. So here we have 24, and our test statistic was 10.97. So I'm going to go through, and oh, it's right in between these values here. Well, not right in between, but somewhere in between those values. And so here are these probabilities that we want to deal with. Now, this brings up one more little, kind of a hiccup, a little issue with this table. Again, because this is giving us areas in the upper tail. So what we've got here, some distribution, I don't know what it looks like, something like this. And let's say I just work with 10.8. So here I have this value 10.8. Five, six. So what this is giving me is an area in the upper tail of uh, 0.99. So this whole area here is 0.99. And then the same can be said for this next value, 9.886 is somewhere down here, 9.886. And, uh, and this is giving us this whole region here, which that red area is 0.995. Now, when we want the p-value, we don't want that whole region. What we want is the lower tail in this case. We want this smaller area down here. And so in order to get that value, we need to calculate 1 minus 0.99. So that would be 0 0.01. And 1 minus 0.995, that would be 0 0.005. Those now are our two relevant probabilities. Again, because this is a two-tailed test, in order to obtain our p-value, we would need to then multiply those two values by 2. So this is going to be something less than 0 0.02 and greater than 0 0.01. So I'm multiplying each of these. This is multiply by 2 and multiply this by 2. And that gives us our range uh, of the p-values. So I'll come back to our problem. Our p-value is between 0 0.02 and 0 0.01. So that gives us sufficient evidence uh, with an alpha. Do we have alpha? We don't have alpha. But we're going to be doing a 95% confidence interval, so that must mean that alpha is 0 0.05. So if our p-value is less than 0.02, then we can reject, and we have sufficient evidence here to support the alternative hypotheses. Whatever that means, we don't have any context here, so we can't really interpret that at all. 
Okay, so then part B, now we develop our 95% confidence interval. So remember, this is a little bit of a different looking formula than we used for the T and the Z tables because it's an asymmetric, uh, non-negative distribution. So that unknown population variance is somewhere in between these two values, n minus 1 s squared divided by that critical value for 1 minus alpha divided by 2, and this lower limit is n minus 1 s squared divided by chi squared alpha divided by 2. So then it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers and finding the relevant critical values. I'm just going to see if I can give myself a little bit more space to work with here. Okay. So I have sigma squared n minus 1 is 25 minus 1. That sample standard deviation was 1.9 squared. Oh, this should be an equal sign, less than or equal to. And we'll get those critical values in just one second. And this lower limit, again, 25 minus 1 times 1.9 squared divided by the other relevant critical value. So I want uh, for alpha divided by 2 for 95% confidence interval. I'm going to come back to our chi-squared tables. We're still working with that distribution of 24 degrees of freedom. So we're just looking at these values here. My upper value, alpha divided by 2, is 0 0.025. My lower value, 1 minus alpha divided by 2, is 0.975. And so my two critical values are going to be 39.364. Let me just bring that one over here. 39.364. And the other one will be right down here, 12.401. Good. Now it's just a matter of crunching the numbers. Let me get my calculator. So 24 times 1.9 squared equals divided by 12.401, 6.9, let's say 6.97, so 6.97, and this lower value, whoops, what have I done, I want this one here. 24 times 1.9 squared divided by 39.364, 2.2. So there we go, our 95% confidence interval for the population variance is between 2.2 and 9.7. Is that consistent with our hypotheses test? Well, let's see. In that test, we had sufficient evidence to reject the null hypotheses, which says that the variance is not, at least at the 95% confidence or the alpha 05 level of significance, that is saying that it is not 7.9. And so when we produce that interval, we say, well, I'm 95% confident that it's between 2.2 and 6.97. Of course, 7.9, this hypothesized value, is somewhere out here, outside of that interval. And so that is then consistent. If I'm 95% confident it's between 2.2 and 6.97, then I am certainly 95% confident that it is not 7.9. Okay, that's it. That's all there is to this uh, short little problem. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.